we are going to be looking at how to solve equations involving squares and square roots. So our first equation asks us to solve for O, and we have the equation 9 is equal to the square root of O. And please notice this is the variable O, not a zero. Anytime we're solving an equation, we want to use inverses or opposites to get the variable by itself. So if my variable O, right now they're taking the square root of it, I have to think to myself the opposite of a square root is squaring something. And if I square what I have on the right, I also have to square what I have on the left. Okay, and then solving this, 9 squared is 9 times 9, or 81. And on the right side, square and square root are opposites, leaving me with 0. So O has to equal 81, which makes sense because 9 times itself gives me 81, or in other words, the square root of 81 is 9. So it always helps to think of as a double check to plug that number in and say, okay, is the square root of 81 9? Yes. So I think I solved it correctly. This time we're going to solve for s, and we have the equation 6 is equal to the square root of s. Well, we're going to use our opposites. The opposite of a square root is squaring something. If I square the right side, I also have to square the left side. Well, 6 squared, or 6 times 6, gives me 36. On the right side, the square and square root are opposites, leaving me with just s. And again, as a double check, if you want to plug it in, you can say, okay, well, if I put 36 in place of s, the square root of 36 is 6. So that works out. Okay, setting up my equation here, I have 4 is equal to the square root of w, and I want to solve for w. Well, the opposite of taking a square root is squaring, so let's square both sides. 4 squared, or 4 times 4, is 16. The square and the square root cancel out, leaving me w. And this should make sense, because the square root of 16 is 4. Solve for r. Okay, we have 6 is equal to the square root of r. To solve for r, my opposite is to square both sides. 6 squared, or 6 times 6, gives me 36. On the right side, a square and a square root are inverses, so I can cancel those out and get r. And again, doing this time we're just going to do a mental math check. If I put 36 in place of r, the square root of 36 is 6. So that should make sense. Solve for i. 5 is equal to the square root of i. So I'm going to start by squaring both sides. That's my inverse for the square root. 5 squared, or 5 times 5, gives me 25. The square and the square root cancel each other out, leaving me with i. So i equals 25. And again, if you do a mental math check, if you put 25 in place of i, well, yes, the square root of 25 is 5. So that works. Solve for c. We have the equation 7 is equal to the square root of c. To solve for c, we're going to square both sides. 7 squared, or 7 times 7, is 49. The square and the square root cancel out, leaving me with c. And just doing a quick double check, if I put 49 in place of c, even just mentally, well, yeah, the square root of 49 is 7. We're going to solve for r. We know 2 is equal to the square root of r. 
To get r by itself, we're going to do the inverse, which is squaring, right? The square root and the square are opposites. Whatever we do on one side, we do the same thing on the other. So 2 squared, or 2 times 2, gives me 4. The square root and the square are opposites, so I'm left with just r. And again, this should make sense because the square root of 4 does give me 2. Solve for r. Okay, we've got 10 is equal to the square root of r. To get r by itself, our opposite would be to square it. We'll do that same thing on the other side. 10 squared or 10 times 10 gives me 100. Square and square root cancel out, leaving me with r. So r equals 100. And again, as a quick mental check, does the square root of 100 give us 10? Yes. Okay, solve for h. Now notice, this time they're looking for two answers. So we're going in the opposite direction here. We know that 9 is equal to h squared. So we already know that square and square roots are opposites, because when we had the square root, we squared it to cancel it out. So here, we would do the opposite. If we've got h squared, we would want to take the square root of that to get h by itself. And of course, when we take the square root on one side, we have to do the same thing on the other side. So square and square roots cancel, leaving us with h. Now the reason they're asking for two answers here, when you take the square root of 9, you're saying what number times itself gives me 9? Well, 3 times 3 gives me 9. But if you think about your signs, remember a negative times a negative gives you a positive number. So 3 squared is equal to 9, but so is negative 3 squared. Because if I say negative 3 times negative 3, that also equals positive 9. So I actually have two answers. It could be positive 3 or negative 3 for h. So h equals 3 and h equals negative 3. Okay, solve for a, and our equation is 9 is equal to a squared. Just like last time, we're going to use our inverses or opposites. The opposite of squaring something is the square root, so let's take the square root of both sides. Square and square root cancel out, leaving me with a. Now when we do the square root of 9, we saw that we have two answers, because 3 times 3 gives me 9, but negative 3 times negative 3 also gives me 9. So a could be positive 3 or negative 3.